This is a model called the tragedy of the commons, which should be called the problem with open access since it has little to do with the commons, and tragedy is kind of dramatic. Let's say there's some land with grass on it that people use as pasture for their animals. Nobody owns it, and anyone can come and graze their livestock here. We're assuming that people don't communicate or work together, so we would call this an open access field. Let's assume the number of animals this field can feed is based on the quantity and quality of the grass, which is based on the health of the soil, and it can only hold this many animals. This is the carrying capacity. If animals are added beyond this, the grass can't regrow fast enough to support them all. Also, the grass protects the soil from erosion if too many animals are around the field may decline in productivity, lowering the carrying capacity. The animals will be less healthy and provide lesser quality products, lowering the profit each animal provides. So it's in this group's best interest to keep the number of animals on the field at or below the carrying capacity. But every herdsman that puts an animal on the field will get the direct benefit that that animal provides for them, but they would only share a portion of the cost of the degraded field. If the field were at carrying capacity and a herdsman decides to add an extra animal, the added animal takes some of the food that would have gone to the others. This reduces their value. The owner of that additional animal comes out ahead because even though all his animals are a little bit less healthy, he has more of them. But each herdsman acts under these incentives and will keep adding animals to their herd or let their animals graze longer so long as it's profitable to themselves. But really, they're all losing out, kind of like the prisoner's dilemma. Contrast this to a situation where only one person owns it if they add an extra animal. They're only hurting themselves, so they don't do it. Since new people can't be excluded from the field, there's almost no point in boycotting the use because someone else could just come in. None of the herdsmen own the field, and they can see that the field may not be around forever. They see no point in conservation and just try to use it before someone else does. Okay, so we can go on to apply this model to unregulated open access fisheries, open access forests, and unregulated college dorm sink. But the problem with applying this model to the real world is that we have to assume, among other things, that people don't communicate or work together, which isn't true. With a field like this, people will generally get together and make plans about its use. They may act as a single unit, or just partition it into sections, and they'll regulate the number of people that can use it. And if people are working together and communicating, then it's not really open access. It's not like every management situation is open access until somebody does something about it. So you don't tend to see the open access problem because people don't work together. You tend to see it in situations where people can't work together. Sometimes people are forced into a situation where they're not allowed to work together. Check out this video. Also, the large the management area is, the more difficult communication and influencing each other becomes. For example, the global management of greenhouse gas emissions tends to take on some open access properties. Basically, this model is a way of communicating that when people can't work together on a resource, you call it open access, and it's bad. Which is why the model should have been called the problem with open access. This episode is brought to you by Hardin's Canned Animal Meat, now orphan free. <laughs>